a birthday yesterday. His name is Josiah Daniels. Josiah is up in the sound booth, so you're going to have to sing real loud to sing happy birthday to him. He's in the sound booth. You ready? Happy birthday. And many more. How about it, Joe? Now he's hiding behind the computer. But 15 years old, mighty man of God, keep him in your prayers. Amen. All right. Praise and worship to Let's get on our feet and praise the Lord this morning. I want to welcome all of our visitors. It is so good to have you in the house with us today. We love the Lord and we love you because he loves us. And you're made by him just like we are. And we're glad that you're here to celebrate the moms in your lives of all forms. We pray uh, that you would be blessed today. And I'm inviting the worshipers to come forward. If you would like to worship the Lord in any way, you've got plenty of room up here. Bring a sacrifice of praise this morning. Thanks to you, Lord, and sing. 
is a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of death, the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I search the world. I search the world.
If you have a need today, if you have a need in your life, your family, if you know a loved one, we're going to take that to the Lord right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Almighty God. You are worthy of all of our praise. We lift up the name of Jesus. He is to be exalted. We pray, Almighty God, go even now to those that are sick in body, those that are in the hospital, those that are at home, Heavenly Father, those that are in need, Almighty God, of a touch, a divine miracle, Almighty God. We pray, Heavenly Father, for that miracle to happen even this very moment, Almighty God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and the church said amen. 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 Let's give God praise. Give Him praise. Pastor Alice Akers and I have been married for over 50 years. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know of anyone that I trust more with the Word of God than this woman that's standing right here, right now, fixing to bring the Word of God to you. This week, she has devoted herself to prayer and, and to consecrate on the Word and to make sure that she brought to us a living Word that changes lives. So I, I want to encourage you. You ready? ready? You got a red hot? Yeah. All right. Would you please welcome Sister Pastor Alice Akers. Thank you all for being here. I, I just feel so happy for all you moms who have your children with you here today because I know what that means to you. And I, I want to first say thank you to the, the head of our church, my husband, the pastor, who's granted me this time to be able to bring a word from the Lord to you. And to all of you in this congregation who have texted me this week, called me this week, told me this week that you have been praying for me because I have definitely felt your prayers. I thank the Lord. I feel like the, the word that the Lord has given me, I sought the Lord for this and I asked him, I said, God, what is relevant for this day, for this time, for us women? We are living in the last days we can't take lightly the things of the Lord any longer. It is time for us to line up with the Word of God, to prepare ourselves as the bride of Christ, and to be ready for His coming. And in the process of doing that, to be an influence to those that are around us. Amen? So let's just... Uh, well, we've had prayer already, so Lord, I just thank You for that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that as... Um, covering this service with prayer, and I am believing that God is going to speak to our hearts today. Now, that means that you have to have your ears open to hear, and you have to have your heart prepared for the Word of God to accept it. Sometimes it's easy, and sometimes it's not, but it's all the Word of God. I promise you that I am only going to be giving you what the Word says because what Alice says doesn't mean anything. But what God says, we're going to stand before him one day, and we're going to give an account for that. So um, the text that I have chosen is from Psalms 112, verse 9b. They lived lives of influence and honor that will never be forgotten. And, of course, we can never... I can't let a Mother's Day pass that I don't remember Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31. And how many of you got one of the inserts this morning, one of the handouts? Did you get, if you didn't get one, are there any left? Do we have any left in the foyer? If not, we'll try to make sure that you get one because this is something I want you to take home with you. Our women's ministries have gifted you um, this morning, a gift as you came in, and I hope you've already looked at it because I want to use that at the end of the sermon 
to also bring a point across for us. So if you didn't get one, please raise your hand and we'll try to see that our, um, see that our mothers and our women get these. But on the front of this, I found this and it's, it is called the virtuous woman. And across the, this woman's head is down her hair, like her hair extending down are the points of the verse of this scripture text. That means that you are a woman of influence. When we look at that woman in Proverbs 31, some of us think, oh my goodness, I could never measure up to that. But you know what? God has given us the measure that he wants us to measure up to. I'm going to talk to you about a woman today that some of you may have never even heard her name. But yet she had a great influence on one of the greatest leaders in the Bible. So you don't have to have, you don't have to have your name known. You don't have to play a big part, but you do have to be an influence. And actually, whether you want to or not, you are an influence. What does the word influence mean? So I looked up the definition of it. It says the power or capacity of causing an effect in indirect or intangible ways. An emanation of spiritual or moral force to have an effect on the condition or development of something or someone. Synonyms for that word are authority, leverage, sway, effect, impact, impress, touch, or reach. As I said, whether we realize it or not or whether we want to or not, we have an influence. And if I was to ask you, what kind of an influence do you want to be? I'm sure all the hands in this room would raise up and say, I want to be a good influence. We are an influence to everyone around us, to our family, to our parents, to our siblings, to our husbands, to our children, our extended family, our in-laws, our friends, our co-workers, our church family, our neighbors. Our fear, sphere of influence is far-reaching. And as I said, what we have to check is what kind of an influence am I being? Am I being a good or godly influence Or am I influencing those around me in a way that is not becoming to the Lord? As I said, I want to tell you about a woman in the Bible whose influence actually helped save a people. No, it's not Esther, even though she did. Nope, it's not Sarah, even though she did. Nope, it's not Naomi, even though she did. We can look through the Bible and we can see a lot of women who had a great influence. But the person that I'm talking about today, and as I said, you may or may not know her name, is Jochebed. Jochebed was one of the descendants of Levi, who was the son of Jacob and brother of Joseph. Their family had come to Egypt to escape the famine and to be under the care of Joseph, who had become one of the rulers of Egypt. Now, are you getting a little bit of history? Do you know who this is? You know who I'm talking about? Joseph that was put in the pit and then went to the palace. He came, God had a plan and all of that. So to me, that's encouraging. And actually, when our son first started into uh, to working a job over in Nashville, and he he would call us. He started out as a customer service rep, and I'd call him and say, "How's it going, son?" And he said, "Mom, I'm I'm spending eight hours a day being cussed out on the phone." He said, "It's really hard." And I began praying over him, and the Lord just spoke to my heart. He's a Joseph, and you tell him, he's a Joseph. He may be in the pit right now. He may feel like he's in the prison, but if he will exalt me, if he'll keep following after me, then I'll raise him up to that place and take him to that place that I want him to be. Well, today, I have seen that happen. I gave him that message from the Lord, and he followed the Lord in all of those times, those hard times. 
And today, he called me last week, and, and um, he, he's being considered for director of a program in IT. And he didn't even go to school for that. I said, son, how, how can you do this? He said, mom, it's the first thing I've done that makes sense. It's the way my brain works. It is what God had gifted into him that he wasn't even aware of. But God will do that for us, won't he? When we commit our lives to him, even though we go through hard times, even though we go through difficult times, if we will keep our hearts and our focus on God, God will bring us to the place that he desires us to be. So back to this story. This family, Joseph's family, was reunited in Egypt because Joseph had become second in command in the land of Egypt. He was right, one of those right under Pharaoh, and he was able to, to bring his family down. They were saved from the, fam- from the famine, and they lived there for many, many years, and they prospered there. God always has a plan for your life. His plan is the best. And it's the best for us to follow, even though we may not understand it. Well, the Egyptians found so much favor with God there until the Pharaoh, the next Pharaoh, Joseph died. And then there was another Pharaoh who came into into, uh, leadership. And he didn't know who Joseph was. He, He didn't understand how Joseph had actually saved the land of Egypt as well as rescuing his family. You know, God's blessings are always, I call it double-edged. He blesses us, but he blesses others in the meantime. And he, when he is blessing you and you influence, you're getting a blessing, but you're also blessing others. There is, there's a great point in that. But this Pharaoh did not know who Joseph was. He just saw that there were all of these foreign people in his land and they were becoming great in his land and he got scared. He was afraid he was going to lose power. So he, the word of God says, this is all found in the book of Exodus chapter two, for those of you who are not familiar with this story. Um, The word of God says, the Egyptians began to oppress the Israelites and afflict them with requiring them to serve them. It says that the more they afflicted him, afflicted those people, the more that they grew. It finally came down to the point that this king said, there's only one way to, to take care of this. And that is that we're going to kill every one of the male children that are born. Every male child that is born has to be thrown into the river and killed. How would you like to hear that? Especially if you were pregnant and going to have a baby. How would you like to hear that news? Well, sure enough, when Jochebed had her child, it was a baby boy. And the word says that he was a beautiful child. Well, she and her family hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she made an ark and laid the baby in that ark and put it at the the river's edge. And she assigned her daughter, Miriam, to watch over him and to see what was going on and to take care of him. Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to bathe, and she found that baby along the the reeds of the river. She decided, she looked at that baby. Have Have you ever seen a child that you just looked at the first time and you fell in love with? Where's Ephraim? That's the way Ephraim is. I took one look at that child and I fell in love with him. I'm his adopted grandmother. I'm not by blood, but I'm his grandmother. I love that baby. Well, I think that's what happened with Pharaoh's daughter. She took one look at this child and she could tell he was a Hebrew child. And she knew what her father was going to do to these Hebrew children. But she said, "Uh uh-uh, not this one. I'm going to keep this one. And along came little Miriam, and she said, ma'am, ma'am, can, can, can I make a suggestion? Since this is a Hebrew child, can I, can I get one of the Hebrew women to nurse this baby for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said, well, that would be a great idea. So guess what? Moses' mom got to be his nurse and his nanny. And you know what? She was a great influence on him. 
She taught him the ways of God. She taught him to love God's people. And because of that, this man found his destiny for what God had for him. If you, I, I, I want, my husband's been teaching us from um, the book of Hebrews, and we, we're going over chapter 11. It's called the, the uh, Heroes of Faith. And do you know that this man, Moses, is listed in that as one of the heroes of faith? It says, instead of choosing a life of riches and affluence by living in Pharaoh's house, he chose to align with the people of God. He was chosen by God to lead his people, the Israelites, out of the land of Egypt into the promised land. He was a man of faith. But it was because of the influence of his mother who taught him the ways of God. She was definitely a godly influence, not only on Moses. She had three children. Aaron, Aaron, who was, he was called to be in the priestly line. Miriam, who was a prophetess. And she led the women, when they crossed over into the promised land, she led the women in worship. All three of her children were godly children because of the influence that she had on their lives. So how can we know if we are being a good or godly influence? Well, I've come to this conclusion. There's only one way. You have to be under the influence. (laughs) Don't you love that? Under the influence of God Almighty, of Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The past few weeks, Pastor has been preaching on Sunday morning about some pretty straight sermons to us from Romans about how we're to live our lives. How many of you got one of those, those handouts last week about the 25 things that Romans tells us in Romans 12, 9 through 21. If you didn't, there are a few that are left out on the counter. Pick one of those up because it, it is straight down the line to tell you step by step of what we need to do, how we need to live our lives. But that's what the Word of God does. The Word is our manual to teach us how to live, to teach us what to do, and to teach us what not to do. We've got to consult that manual, and we've got to cultivate the fruits of the Spirit to learn how to live and how to teach our children to live by word and by example. Now, as I was studying, I, I, I won't take the time to do it, but I do want you guys to, to read. Um, I've, I've got the Bible app on my phone, and I, I really love having that because it's handy. But I read Ephesians 4, the whole chapter of Ephesians 4, and I read it in the Passion Translation. It is so beautiful, and I was like, wow, I wish I could just read that. That would be my sermon. That would tell us exactly what to do. But it, that, that, there again, it's the instruction book. This is the manual. My husband has always been a, a good one for when he has an interest in something. We had, when we lived in Florida, we had a Volkswagen. And <laughs> at that time, we were poor as dirt. We, did, <laughs> we couldn't really afford, and Volkswagens are expensive to get worked on. So you know what he did? He went out and found a manual about how how to work on a Volkswagen. And he's always done that. He's always, if he's had an interest in something or if there's a need to know how to do something, right now he's been watching so many YouTube videos on how to grow a garden. (laughs) And I love that about him because he is not leaving it to himself, just trial and error. And if we do that, if we leave our lives to just trial and error and just case or all, let's see what's going to happen here, most of the time it's going to come to no good end. But if we'll consult the manual, and if we will follow what that manual says to do, we will have a good end result. We always will. 
So we have to do that. That is, that is one. We, first of all, we've got to have, the, have our leadership under Jesus Christ. We have to come to him, and, and we have to submit our lives to him. And then we have to learn how to live by reading his word, by communicating with him, and by walking out what he has said to do. What I've learned is that some of my best opportunities to be a good influence have been in some of life's most difficult times and under hard circumstances. <laughs> and I have to admit that at some, some of those times, I've been checked that I'm not being a good influence because of my bad attitude, my unforgiving spirit, or because of the words coming out of my mouth. So there again... When you have the Holy Spirit residing within you, he will prick your hearts. He will let you know when you are not doing something that's pleasing to God. When you are being a bad influence, he'll prick your heart and let you know about that. Now, when that happens, you have a choice as to how you're going to respond to that. You can either submit yourself to the Lord and to what he is convicting you of, and you can repent and change your ways. Or you can go on and say, I know what's best for me. I'm going to do it my way. We can do that. But you know what the Word says will happen to us? Our hearts will become calloused so much to the point that when we continue doing those and making those bad choices and doing those things that are not pleasing to the Lord, our hearts become so callous that the Holy, we can't even, we can't even feel it when the Holy Spirit pricks us. As a matter of fact, there's a word for that. And we can see this in our world today that we are turned over to a reprobate mind. Do you know what that means? That means that you can no longer tell what's right and wrong, that you think what's wrong is really right. And that's a very dangerous place to be. But as I said, we have a choice in how we uh, respond to that. And we can change that and we can repent of that and correct that behavior. And we'll continue. Proverbs 14 and 1, my husband made reference to this this morning. The wise woman builds her house but the foolish woman tears it down with her own, own hands. All right, so how do we influence? We influence by our attitudes, by our actions, and by our words. Matthew 15 and 18 says, Out of the heart the mouth speaks. Romans 12 and 2 tells us, Don't be conformed to this world transformed by the renewing of our minds. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says that we have to take every thought captive. Now, I don't know about you ladies, but for me, God's made us with a lot of emotions. And sometimes because of that, my emotions can get away with me. And sometimes I have these vain imaginations of, oh no, this is what's happening. And I'm, I'm learning, take that thought captive and say, God, what is really going on here? <laughs> what's really going on here? Don't let, me, don't let me be controlled by my emotions. But God, let me be controlled by you and by your spirit. Because you know me even better than I know myself. The Word of God tells us that. He knows our very heart. He knows our thoughts. He knows our intents. And He knows everything about us. Philippians 4 and 7 says, Put a guard on our hearts and on our minds. Because our eye gates and our ear gates are the way that the enemy comes in. He comes in. He lets us see things. And sometimes we see things, but our perception of them, because they're going through our filter of our life experiences, are not really the way it is. And the enemy can take that, and he can use that against us. And he has many times for people in destroyed relationships. The same with our hearing. We can hear something. My husband said he hates 
texting important things. And I understand that because I could send you a text and say, good morning, how are you? You may get it, good morning, how are you? You understand what I'm saying? There's a whole lot of difference in our reception and our transmission. So he always says, if you've got anything important, call somebody, talk to them. And if you can, talk to them face to face, because then we can also see our body language and understand what's going on. You may have heard this before. Watch your thoughts because they become words. I had, I was counseling with someone and this was a person that always spoke their mind. You know, whatever they were thinking, they spoke it. And I said, you know, sometimes we have these thoughts, but we don't have to speak them out. You know, (laughs) so watch our thoughts because they become our words. Watch your words because they become deeds. If you talk about it enough, I can talk about something and I can get red hot about something that happened. You know? The more you stir that, the more you talk about it, the worse it gets. So we have to watch our words because they become our deeds. Watch our deeds because they become our habits. Watch our habits because they become our character. And character is everything. And watch our character because that becomes our destiny. John Maxwell wrote a book, How to Become a Person of Influence, and he uses the acronym INFLUENCER to outline what it takes to become a person of influence or how to impact those around you. And inside this handout that I gave you, I printed off those, and I went, I went a little step further and I found scriptures to support all these. I looked up what the definition of each one of these words meant, and then I gave you a scripture reference too because I want us to become people. I want us to become influencers. So you can take this. I'm just going to go over um, just the words and the scripture references for them, and then you can take that home and study it a little deeper. But I, integrity, in nurtures, Excuse me, let me go back to integrity. Proverbs 20 and 7. Nurtures. 1 Timothy 4 and 6. F, faith. Hebrews 11 and 6. Listens. James 1, 19 and verse 25. Understands. Proverbs 2, 6 and 4 and 7. Enlarges. Psalms 119.32, navigates, Proverbs 2 and 20, connects, Colossians 2 and 19 and Ephesians 4, 16 and 17, empowers, Ephesians 3, 16 through 19, and reproduces Isaiah, the whole chapter of Isaiah 55. But that is how we can We can influence those around us. Now, all that sounds really nice and really good, and you're saying, I don't want to do all that. (laughs) I understand. Sometimes it's not easy, but it's worth it. And you know, the Lord has given us commands to do things. We don't just go on how we feel, do we? If What if Jochebed said, I'm just going to have to give in. The Pharaoh has already given this command that my baby's going to have to be killed. So I'm just going to throw him in the river. Well, instead, she really did do what he said. She put him in the river. (laughs) But she had a plan. She decided, I don't have to follow the ways of an ungodly king, but instead, I am going to follow the Lord. And I am going to influence this child. So it's worth it. Now, we as, God has made us women that we are, most of us are designed to just be nurturers. That's in us. Some of us are nurturing different ways. Um, some of us are tender and loving. Some of us are straightforward and to the point. 
That's okay. We still we have to be both ways. We need both of those in our lives, don't we? There have been times that I, that I've had to when my son was little that you know I tried to be gentle and loving with him, but if I saw him running to, towards the road and fixing to get in the pathway of a car, honey, this girl's gonna be screaming. No, stop! You're not gonna do that. So we have we have a responsibility. Not just for our children either, but for our brothers and sisters. When we see our brothers and sisters going down a path that is not going to lead them to a good end, it's our responsibility to, first of all, pray for them and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to their heart. Then secondly, if the Lord tells you it's okay for you to speak to that person, to you, for you to go to that person privately and say, I, I want to talk to you about something. The Lord has laid this on my heart, and I want to share this with you. We, that is our responsibility. That is speaking the truth in love. And when, we, when I, I believe everybody that is here, we love each other. I know that these mothers and these children that are here, that you can, by them being here, says, I love my children, and my children love me. And I think in the body of Christ, it's the same. So many times in this world, we have been, we're living in a culture that, has, that says, nobody's more important than me and what I want. So what I want, what I think is more important than anything else. That is totally unbiblical. That is leading you down a wrong road. Because the Lord said, if you love your life, then you lose your life for my sake. You lay down your life and you love others. And it's worth it. It is so worth it. Now, I wish that... I was so blessed to have a, a godly mother and to be raised in a home where my mother was, was one of those people that she unconditionally loved people. And I don't care how bad they were, how low, what, you know, if they were on the street, she would find something good about them. And I knew that that was from God because we don't see that way, do we? But she taught me that, and I am so grateful for that. And this morning in our Sunday school class, and by the way, Karen, I thought, you know what? She could just come up here and teach that lesson, and we'd be having the same, same thing going on here. She did a wonderful job. I want to encourage you, if you're not attending Sunday school, please come and be part of this class as we're learning the articles of faith for our denomination and the, the, the scriptural references of where those are found. We're we're based on the Word of God. You can learn more about that. But she did a beautiful job this morning on teaching that. And my, I, I went down a rabbit trail, and I have no idea where I was going with that. <laughs> but um, anyway, my, yes. Oh, she asked each one of us, Tell me something about your mother. What, what was one thing about your mother that really sticks out in your mind? And I, I, was li- I listened to all of those around you that said, she's my rock. She's faithful. She's, she loves. She teaches. She's, she is, you know, she is um, forgiving. And all of those things that mothers do, but we women do that too. Now, I know some of you did not have a good upbringing. Some of you had a lot of pain in your life. You had a lot of pain, but the Lord has been so gracious to you to bring you out of that. And he has placed people in your life that have loved you and that have led you to a different way. So you know what we can do with that? We can always bring, God always says what the enemy means for evil the Lord will turn it around for good. And what we can learn from that is, okay, maybe I didn't have the best, but I can be better. I can do it right, whatever. And, and my mother is as great a person as she was and as much as I loved her and as a great a godly influence she was in my life. There were some things that I said, 
I've learned from my mother not to do that. Because none of us are perfect. But we learn from that and we, we improve in that and we try to be different and we change that then. That's what sometimes we can end generational curses when we take that stance and say, uh-uh, enemy, you may have decided that you wanted my family to be a family of, of drunkards. That's what was the curse that was over my father's line is that they were alcoholics. And that line, that the enemy was trying to do that, but my dad made a decision that he was going to turn to God, surrender his life, and give his life to God. And because of that, I'm standing here today because he decided to change that and to be, be an influencer for God instead of continuing on in the path. So it's up to us. It is up to us. This is what I've got to say to you. It's time to stop being controlled by our emotions, by our vain imaginations, and by our flesh. We have to be obedient to God. We've got to study His Word. We have to put that in us because it brings life. It teaches us how to live. We have to repent and turn from our old ways. We've got to step down off that throne of our lives and give him control. You know, one of uh, us ladies, we like to be in charge. We do. And God made it that way. I mean, the men go out and they work and it's us that's in that home running that home, right? We're in control. And sometimes we want to be that way with God. But we can't. (laughs) We have to say, okay, God. I'm trying to do your job for you. Please forgive me. I'm going to take my place, get back where I need to be. Now you take the place of the throne of my life and you be in charge of ruling me and leading me and telling me which way I need to go. We've got to take our rightful place in our lives. Let the Lord take his rightful place as Lord of our lives. We have to submit ourselves to his authority in our lives, and to the authority of those that are over you. If you are not submitting to the authority that is over you, you're in rebellion. And rebellion is not of the Lord. We have to humble ourselves and learn to have a a servant spirit. We have to be filled with the Holy Spirit and allow him to lead our lives. My sister and I have had this conversation and she said, you know, I have questioned and I was like, God, do we have to stay in a, a spirit of the Holy Ghost? Stu-? She called it a Holy Ghost stupor, <laughs> but it's being led by the spirit. Do we have to be, live under that all the time? Do we have? Yes, we do, especially in this day and time, because I'm going to tell you folks, I wish I could tell you that everything's going to be fine. Things are going to turn up rosy, but not according to the Word of God. The Word of God says things are going to get worse. They're going to get darker. And if we don't get a hold of it now, if we're swayed by every little thing that comes around, we're not going to be able to stand. So we have got to do this. It's time for us to do this, to be filled with the Spirit and allow Him to lead our lives. I'm going to say this is some of you are not going to like it, but you have to love and respect your husbands. Ladies, I know that's not always easy, but that's what the Word of God tells us to do. We love and respect our husbands. We see their shortcomings just as they see ours. But we don't nag on them and tell, you know, constantly um, bombard them with that. We take it to the Lord and say, now, God, I, I see this. And is it just me or is this something that you're not pleased with? And if you're not pleased with it, God, could you please speak to him about it? And you know what? You know what I have found? When I stay out of his way, I get out of the way of his laser beam that's going right to my husband and dealing with him about something. (laughs) And things are a lot more peaceable in our home 
when I'm not always on him about something. And I let the Lord do that. And then he improves his relationship with the Lord. It's a win-win, girls. <laughs> so let, that is what we have to do. We have to love and respect our husbands. We have to train and teach our children and our grandchildren. And don't stop when they leave the house. As a matter of fact, how many of you, uh, some of the things that you are, have dealt with or are dealing with with your adult children is worse than when they were little? Yeah? Huh? Yeah, that happens. And then we have the grandbabies that come along. And the, our influence on them never, never stops. As long as we are living then we are, we are having an influence on them for the good or for the bad. We have to accept and honor and serve our families and our friends. We had a conference here at the 1st of, of April, and it was so good. I, I gleaned so many practical things about how to be present for people, how to listen to them. And, and I was like, yes, Lord, that's what you did. You listened to people. You stopped and got involved in their lives and found out who they were. Everybody's got a story. And everybody needs somebody to listen to them. So that's how we can do it. We've got to be present and available for those in our sphere. We have to stop having itching ears and listen to gossip, and then have wagging tongues that spread that gossip. It's got to stop. Because that not only damages you, it damages that other person. It damages how that person looks at who we're gossiping about. It changes their opinion of them. And then they take on something that is not their responsibility and not something for them to carry. It's wrong. We've got to stop it. We've got to stop it. And the Holy Spirit will, he will prick your hearts when you start getting into that. I've been on conversations and start talking about things. I'm like, wait, I've got to stop or I'm going to start getting into gossip and I'm not going to do that. We've got to make Intentional choices not to do that. We have to rectify damaged relationships. We have to forgive and ask forgiveness and then forget it. Don't bring it back up every time you get upset with somebody. Yeah, do you remember what you did to me 20 years ago? I'll never forget it. Wrong. Then you're the one who's carrying something that's going to take you down. Because that's, that is what it does. But God said, just as he has forgiven our sins, and he put them in the sea of forgetfulness, when we go to him, oh God, do you remember when I did? He was like, hmm, no, I don't remember that. He forgets them. He forgets our sins. We are supposed to follow his example. So, and I know sometimes it's hard to forget it, but it can go back further and further and further and further into our memories so that every time that something happens, it's not brought back up. And pretty soon, it'll be, it'll be forgotten. We have to humble ourselves and follow Jesus' Jesus' example on how to live. We have to lead with integrity and humility we have to walk uprightly before God and man. I want to tell you, it's never too late to change. I'm 72. I'm still making changes. <laughs> I've been saved since I was eight years old. And I really have loved the Lord all those years and follow, tried to follow him as closely as I could. But I am still working on changing things in my life. And it's never too late. Don't give up. Well, this is the way I've always been. My mama did it this way. I do it that way. Well, shame on you. Stop that generational curse. Be different. Change. Do it a different way and see how your children are blessed because of those changes. It's never too late to do the right thing, to become 
a godly woman of influence. And that's my prayer for you. Inside this this, uh, handout, I printed off a scripture reading plan. And I think this is so important for us. Now, in your gift, you got, I think everybody got, uh, have you opened your gifts? Do you know what it is? Open it up and look at it. Thank you, Women's Ministries, for providing this, or thank you, church, for providing this for our women. But there's a mirror inside that, and it says, we are a reflection of God. The only way that we can be a reflection of God is that we know who we are in Christ. And on this page, there are some declarations. And I am so, I know how important it is for us to declare God's word over ourselves and to make these declarations over ourselves. So this is 31 days. You can do one a day. But I want you to take that mirror out and to look in that mirror and to declare those things of who you are in Christ. Now, if you've never accepted the Lord, or if you have known him, but you've strayed away from him, and you're not walking with him, you've got to come to that place that you, again, submit yourself to the Lord, that you confess your sins to him, and you ask him to be Lord of your life. And once you do then you are a new creation in Jesus. Once you do, you become part of that family of God. And all of these declarations are things that you declare over yourself. Sometimes you may be going through a time when you are, you're really under attack. Then you look down through there and you find a scripture. Okay, God, this says that I'm rooted and grounded in Christ's love, that I am strengthened by the Holy Spirit. You find that scripture and you read it over yourself and you pray it over yourself. I want every woman in this place to become a victorious influencer. And you can do that. So what I want to ask is if our, if the music team will come up. I'd like for all of us women to come down front and I want a blessing to be prayed over us. I want you to come down and let's join together as women. And let and th- that is if you want to be a woman of influence, if you want to have a good influence on your children, if you want your children's lives to be better than your lives have been, I want you to come join me down here at the altar. And I want us to have a prayer over it. And guys, can we start with the um, can we start with the bridge of this song? Because it's a declaration that tells that says what God thinks about us, who He says that we are. Come on down, ladies. Don't don't be shy. Come on down. Come on, gather around the altar area. So good to have Gracia de Dios with us today, to worship with us. We love you guys. I just want to say how beautiful you all look (laughs) and how happy I am to be part of you. And I want to say to you that God has a great calling on you to be an influencer for his kingdom. If you haven't found that place yet, you keep seeking him. And sometimes it changes. But say, God, am I doing all that I can do? Am I being all that I can be? Can I do anything else for you to bring honor to you? And he will let you know. So Lord, as these beautiful women have all come down here today, Lord, we're all different ages, different skin types, different hair colors, different sizes. 
But God, we're all the same. We have been created in your likeness and in your image. And God, you have fearfully and wonderfully made each one of us. Lord, I know that the enemy wants to tear us down and to tell us that we're nothing and nobody, that we won't amount to anything because of the things that the choices we've made, the family we were born in, our life experiences, that there's no hope for us, but that is a lie. And we crush that in the name of Jesus. Lord, and we declare over these women that they are created in the image of God. They are created for His purpose. And they will accomplish their destiny in You, Lord. So God, I just pray You know what each one of us needs today. And would You touch our hearts, Lord? And would You help us, oh God? Let our focus be on You. Let us take ourselves off of, off of the throne of our lives. And let you be Lord of our lives. And God, let us look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. God, our, our young women that are here, Lord, that are, God, they're going to be approaching adulthood. But they're also being influenced, oh God. And I pray that you will just let them be influenced mightily for your kingdom. That you are raising up strong warrior women God, that is going to stand against the darkness of this world. Father, let us be the light that you have intended us to be. Let us be the influence that you have created us to be, O oh God. And Lord, we submit ourselves to you right now. Women, would you just say, Lord, I submit myself to you today. I am yours. Do in my life what you want to do, Lord. Make me who you want me to be. I surrender. Amen. I want us to sing this bridge because this says, you're chosen. How many know you are chosen? That before you were ever born, you were chosen by God. He knew what you were going to be, what you're going to look like, what you're going to face in life. And he's provided a way for you. So I want us all to sing this in ending. I am who he says I am. Not who the enemy says I am. Not who I've perceived myself to be. But I am who you say I am, Lord. I am chosen, not forsaken. Free and deep, I'm a child.